Nope, I wanted to start at uh, verse 13. This is where I wanted to start. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring, uh, I'm sorry, for the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Did not come through the law. For if it is the inheritance of the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. This is clear scripture. This is, uh, you can't get any clearer than that. So therefore, when we're talking about Christ, when we're talking about faith, we can't mention the law. Hebrew Israelites like to try to twist, they, they like to try to twist and turn and fuse in. Oh, you got to keep the law too. No. No, the, the scriptures is is clear. How can you read this book and just say, no, we got to keep the law as well, or the law is really important. We got to keep the law and we got to have faith at the same time. It doesn't work like that. And the reason why it doesn't work like that is next verse. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. This is why it depends on faith in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guarded to all his offspring again. Not only to the adherents of the law, but also the one who shares the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all? So he's talking about, you know, um, the Pharisees. I said that, you know, Abraham is our father, but there is one that is greater than Abraham, which is Christ. As it is written, I have made for you the father of many nations in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist and hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told talking about abraham right so shall your offspring be he did not weaken in the faith when he considered his own body which was as good as dead since he was about to since he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah, Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness, because remember, there was no law. Abraham was not given a law. So how can Abraham be righteous if there was no law, right? Because he believed God. Let's go down to the next verse. But the word, but the words, I'm sorry, it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who was raised from the dead, Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our for our justification. That's what we read in Isaiah 53, 700 years before Christ was born. That is what Christ came to do. 